What's up, Angel City? I am your girl, Panda here, your host for this episode of Angel City Chicks. And of course, I am joined alongside my favorite podcast partner, Nina, the sickly Kiefer. What is going on over there? <laughs> You're not supposed to make me laugh. I thought we agreed on that. That's right, everybody. Feeling a little sick today, but you know, we had to bring you the best. I like how Amanda's shirt is captioning my emotions so well. So apologies ahead of time if I sound a little congested, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and send Panda all of your complaints as usual. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, yes, you are feeling a little under the weather, and I'm sure it no doubt has everything to do with the lack of sleep, the uh, some of the, the crazy things that we have done this weekend. We've been out and about, and, you know, sometimes it all just kind of catches up with you, and no doubt I'm sure you are feeling the effects of that. And you know what? Let's just tell everybody what's been going on for the last week. How about we do that? I think that's about what we should do. We've got a lot to cover. You know, we're going to start off with some news from the NWSL from Angel City. Then we're going to go into our World Cup watch before we recap our Angel City game. And then we'll give you the what's to come. So stick with us. It's going to be a long ride. And I promise not to cough into the mic. Please do not. I would really appreciate that. But that's not guaranteed because I know I'm going to make you laugh at least half a dozen times on this podcast. So and the problem is, is as soon as I start laughing, I start like coughing and like sneezing, but I do have a handy box of tissues. So Fantastic. we are good to go. Good, good, good. All right. Well, since we've got so much to get into, we'll just go ahead and just like saddle up this horse and ride off into the sunset. Um, and before we get started, though, I want to give a little shout out to someone. I I should have made this the end of the podcast because then that would have forced this person to kind of find it as they went through and be like, hey, I shouted you out, but I wouldn't do that. So I do want to shout someone out. So uh, you know that I do the indoor game um, out in Ontario. And uh, the gentleman there on uh, on everybody's, I think, right or whatever, uh, that is Mark Lucian. And they are huge Angel City fans, especially his daughter, Megan. So his daughter, Megan, is a huge June Endo fan, and she got the privilege to meet her. And I think today she is still the only person that has made June Endo cry. And that was just because she was so emotional in meeting her. And it was just the sweetest thing. It was the sweetest video. He showed it to me and everything. And he's like, she listens to you guys. And I think she would love it, you know, if you uh, were able to shout her out. So, of course, we are here to shout you out, Megan. I've met you a few times. I uh, hope to see you at an Angel City game shortly. So, um, and, you know, we'll talk about June Endo here in just a bit. She is definitely leaving her mark on the World Cup um, and in the best way possible. So, so anyways, let's move on to some short but sweet little NWSL news. Speaking of young, of course, you you tell everybody what this little uh, little nugget is that we're looking at here. Holy cow, Chloe Ricketts. You know, she is just doing all kinds of things. And, you know, JR and I talked about this. Chloe Ricketts doesn't look 16, but she is only 16 years and two months old. And she ends up being the youngest goal scorer in NWSL history with that. And I swear, if you pass this girl on the street, you would be like, no, 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 that's like a 20 something year old because she is like, I don't know if she's <laughs> barreling hay all her life or what, but she has got it going. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I feel like generally the younger population just seems to look older to me than, than when we were. I mean, I look at pictures of me whenever I was in high school and look like such a dweeb, such a door. Like I just look like I don't have it together yet. And you look <laughs> at children today and they look like they've got life already figured out at like 12. Right. And I'm like, man, I don't know. So anyways, congrats to her. I think she said something uh, when they talked to her, uh, her little sister was like, you know, you know, score today. And uh, she's like, okay. So she had to do it. Okay. Score today. Okay. You got this. So anyways, congrats to her. And uh, something else that we um, highlighted many times uh, is women's specific soccer stadium. This is what's going on, Casey. We've talked about them doing it before and uh, we get like a really good first look at what's going on. And uh, Carly Lloyd, who um, mm -hmm. no, uh, <laughs> no stranger to controversy, which we're we going to get into that later. 
<laughs> we will get to her later, but she did make this comment, which I don't think anybody um, can dispute, which is Casey Current Stadium is definitely setting a precedent, and we need more of that. And uh, from what I've heard, that will not be the first and last stadium that is built specifically for women. So I love that. And on moving that project along and setting a precedent. Absolutely. And with that, let's also quickly talk about the Messi effect, because this is going to affect women's soccer, too, because Messi won't play on turf. And so he's saying, if you want me to come to your stadium, it's got to be real grass. Right, exactly. And uh, I mean, I think that just needs to happen anyways. I mean, just the the, the large incidents of, uh, of injuries that we have in this league, especially ACLs, you know, that's certainly um, not the only contributing factor, but something that has probably not helped its cause. So, uh, hey, let's do it. Let's go. I love this for here us. For it. How many times have we complained about like having to go to Portland and play on the turf and things like that? All right. You want Messi to come visit you? better fix that right exactly so good to see hopefully it will not be uh, like i said the last time we talk about something like this happening um i would love it'd be awesome if angel city had their own honestly i mean it's great and all sharing one but it'd be nice to have like our own like our home like we will never be booted from games because it's ours and unfortunately that is not the cause and we've already felt the effects of that but that's okay. Let's move on. Anyways, we don't have much yeah. Angel City news, actually. Aside from the game itself and some uh, a couple little things, we don't have a lot because there's not a whole lot happening, which is okay with me. We all need a little break, but um, let's take a look at uh, what's going on. Thing. Yeah, it's uh, always talk about community impact and what's going on. So we wanted to get this out as soon as we could so that if you wanted to be a part of something or you needed to get out and volunteer, you could. Um, so on Thursday, August 3rd, you can go and volunteer with the Garden School Foundation at 24th Street Elementary's Free Farmer's Market. So show up there. There's a link in the bio for Angel City where you can go and sign up. I'm sure that'd be a great time. Farmers markets are always really fun and, and check out some, some fun, uh, you know, small business and, and local grower kind of stuff. Absolutely. But do me a favor, everyone. If you are feeling like me and you are under the weather because staying up even one night knocks it all out of you, um, <laughs> don't go. Like, <laughs> Just if you are not feeling there. well, just stay home. Just I mean, go. <laughs> Mina stayed home two days in a row after this last week of craziness and, and just catching up on sleep and yeah. trying to feel better. So, yeah, if you're not feeling well, please rest up because we do want to see you at some of these events for sure. And not only that, but like Panda had to remind me, COVID's still real. So she, we sat down to get ready and she's like, well, have you taken your COVID test yet? I said, no. She's like, well, do you have any? I'm like, yeah, I have like 10. So also, if you're not feeling well, take that test. And, you know, with these events that are community impact events, you know, we are going and talking to some of the like people in our community that don't necessarily have the best access to health care. So don't give them produce and a nice cold to go with it. Like stay home. <laughs> you don't need to take home more than you bargained for. That's for sure. So Absolutely. everybody just take. Yeah, be safe, uh, drink lots of water, stay hydrated, get your rest because, you know, we've got we still have a lot of uh, a lot of soccer left to go. That's for sure. Um, let's talk real quick, too, about some happy news. Uh, we had some engagements in the Angel City community. We had you saw Savannah McCaskill. She posted she got engaged. And also Alex Betain, who uh, she's uh, she's director. Uh, she deals with the players. She's she's hugely involved with the players. She's on the staff there. She got engaged as well. So just big congratulations. We love happy news, especially whenever, uh, you know, our Angel City family is getting uh, bigger and our hearts are growing. And yeah, good news is all always fun news. So congrats to them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I love a good engagement, but let's move on now. We have lots still to cover and we let's go to World Cup Watch. Yes, let's like, get well, into this. So we're going to kind of break this down a couple ways. I'm not going to spend any time really on the Netherlands game. We're going to tell you what we did and how that game uh, turned out. And then we're also going to catch up with uh, some of our other Angel City players, not just the U.S. women's national team uh, players, but everybody that's associated in some way, shape, or form with Angel City. I'm just going to let you know where they're at, where they're going. We're going to talk about this game that uh, I don't know about you, that I lost sleep over last night and wish that I could get back and uh, kind of how we think 
think about that and then uh, kind of take a look at the tables and where we're at, who's left to still um, be able to get out of the group and everything. So kind of kind of try to break that down into some digestible chunks for you, but nothing too, too in depth. We're not breaking down these games. We're not telling you, you know, tactically what we think or formation. We're, ooh, I cannot. And I don't think Nina can either at this point. So, but we will give you what our thoughts are on the game. I will tell you what I'm reading out there on Twitter and on Facebook and Instagram because that is a whole day's worth of sleuthing, Ooh. let me tell you. Drama <laughs> and controversy, and I am here for it. But before so we get quick, into all yeah. that, <laughs> yeah, before we get into that, the first part of this, um, actual uh, World Cup watch was actually way back on, uh, was it, was it Wednesday? Of last week, yes. Wednesday of last week, Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I don't even remember. When we played the Netherlands, which we always knew coming into that match that the Netherlands was going to be our toughest opponent. Um, I don't know. I kind of beg to differ after last night's game, to be honest. But um, we did go head-to-head uh, -head with Netherlands. And after they went up uh, a goal, we were able to claw one back off of a uh, – a, a this stuff header from Haran because I don't know if you got to see that, but whew, oh. that was that was fun. What her and Vanderdonk went at it. She got taken out on the side, and Haran did not like that very much. You could tell her body language was giving her giving us all mad cat. Like if she had hackles and a tail, they would have been standing up and whew. oh but yeah. She, she did the one thing. Pissed. She did the one thing that she should have done, and she said, all right, let me let me take a moment and let me funnel all of this in to a goal, and that's exactly what she did, and thank goodness she did because, I mean, boy, did we need any points that we could get in this group stage because we'll talk about how uh, that ended after we give a little recap on this second game. But I just want to highlight that one because we do have two other games and that one's kind of got lost in the mix because it was so long ago and at this point a little irrelevant. Um, but we did have a good time. We went to the Music Center. Yeah. Um, I don't under... Uh, do you know anything about the Music Center, Nina? Do you have any information? Have you been there? Like, what? What? what what's so, that all about? Growing up in LA, like, it's a quintessential thing to do. Like, you go down, you do the concert hall, you walk around. But as far as, like, going there for events, I haven't really done that. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to be able to go out there and to see, like, literally everyone show up for this. It was a huge event. Hugely popular. Lots of people showed up. Um, I think Mackenzie Pluck and um, Katie Johnson showed up and were doing uh, like a little appearances there. They had some raffles. Uh, they were painting some hats and doing some fun things. So, you know, of course, uh, you know, they never, sh you know, never shy away from doing like fun events and making sure that when you show up, you have a good time. So shout out to Angel City for that. That was a really great event that they hosted outdoors. Beautiful weather. Um, now, speaking of outdoors. <laughs> Speaking of outdoors, let's move on to our next little excursion that we embarked upon. So we talked about it on our previous con um, podcast, and it was called The Ultra. And it was that 20-plus hour day of soccer. And what that meant was from midnight on Friday, or technically midnight on um, sa Saturday is really what it was. We got there at 1130 Friday night. From midnight till 730 when that last game ended, was three games and then of course the Portland game which we'll talk about here in just a moment that happened on Saturday night and if you were able to attend all of those then you got this fun little medal like who doesn't love a medal I mean I that's why I started medal. running road races and doing stupid stuff like that so I could get medals because those are really fun and exciting but um that was a good time I had a lot of fun um it actually went by a lot faster than I thought I don't know what your thoughts were but the only um, thing that disappointed me was sure the top. video of me just going. <laughs> yeah, Nina is not allowed after, I don't know, 9 p.m. She turns into nope. some thing. I don't even know how to like, ex like explain or describe, but I don't recommend it. I'm glad I was able to be the only person there that got to really <laughs> deal with it because we probably would have lost half of our followers. So either way, 
really fun event. They had, you know, fun drinks. They had snacks and a taco truck there. They brought in donuts and um, coffee in the morning. So, you know, again, hosting a fun event, doing their best to really bring the community together and have us all together watching because, you know, I don't know if I would have watched these games otherwise. It was in the middle of the night. I mean, we had, um, what, what were the games? Uh, Sweden and Italy. Yeah, and then there was and then Brazil Jamaica. and France, and then Jamaica Panama. Yes. So those three sets of games, and uh, they were all fun. We had a great time. Sweden came out and they scored one goal and decided, well, we've got four more. <laughs> so that one was kind of fun. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> either way, we did that. Got the medal. Showed up. Got to hang out with a lot of fun people. Different supporter groups were there, and uh, again, just a fun thing to be at. Yeah, um, I got sick. <laughs> And you probably got sick there, <laughs> but either way, that's okay. Um, what else? Let's see. What else did we do? Yeah, did we do I mean, anything? We did see Milan and Juve play and we did go to the Wrexham Los Dos game. So we yes. had all kinds of soccer last week. So we're not going to talk to you about that because this podcast is not about that. No, um, but why don't we catch up with some of our Angel City players? Let's see how they're doing on the world stage. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So what we're going to do before we get into that game is I wanted to highlight how our other uh, players were doing as well in this, because I think that's really important to keep up with them. And some of them are having a great run, some of them not so much, and it has currently ended, unfortunately. But yeah. we did include Vanessa Gilles and uh, Allison Swaby because they are on loan, so they are technically still part of us. And I think it's fun to keep up with them and what they're doing. So let's get in to what happened there. Uh, do you want me to take the reins on this, Nina? Yeah, go for it. I mean, we've got just a quick sentence or two about the two. We did get to see a uh, Swaby play and we know Swaby played with her sister, which is super awesome. Yeah. I've always said I want to see Swaby on our back line. So I'll be excited to see what happens when her loan is up. Yeah, no, exactly. And, you know, because she's at PSG and I think Gilles is still at Lyon. And, uh, you know, doing their things on the European stage. So that's really exciting for them. Um, but as far as with the World Cup, we've got Canada shockingly uh, bounced from the World Cup. They just, uh, you know, I mean, much like how the U.S. is doing, just not really performing up to what their uh, potential is. And I think, you know, they've got a lot of things going on behind the scenes right now. A lot of, uh, I don't know, political and things that federation wise that they're also dealing with. And not that that's an excuse, but there's a lot going on. And uh, I think having that uh, exit from the group stage really was not um, exactly how they wanted it to go. Being the current um, Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a big quite the turnaround. There. And yeah. I know, I message you. I'm like, this is how sick I was. I read Canada didn't make the World Cup in advance, and I thought we didn't make it because I've been so out of it. I thought it thunderstormed last night. Yeah, Nina, she's like, did it rain last night? I'm like, no. I'm 90% <laughs> sure it did. I wish it rained. I could use a really good sleep and a really good thunderstorm right now. I mean, that's probably the thing I miss from the Midwest the most is like a good <laughs> thunderstorm. So, but, um, but so yes. In a horrible thing to say, like, I was happy when I found out it was Canada and not us. Yeah. Nina had no idea when she woke up this morning what was going on. She was in a in a Sudafed haze or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but either way, Canada is out. So Vanessa Gilles will no longer be featuring in the World Cup. However, uh, Swaby, Jamaica, still in it. Uh, they're currently second in Group F with four points. If they tie or win, they should advance uh, with France. However, a loss to Brazil would send them home. So I will go over what when those games are um, at the end of this little World Cup little bracket here and let you guys know when to catch those games in case you're all confused. Because, again, the timing of all this is wild. People are like, is it Monday night? Is it Tuesday night? It depends. If you're on the and East Coast, sick, it's Monday. You don't even know what's up and what's down and... <laughs> It's just all kinds of chaos. Yes. All right. So anyways, let's go ahead. I want to move on real quick to, uh, of course, our captain, our captain, Allie Riley. So obviously we all remember that first game in the World Cup. She, uh, you know, history for New Zealand in winning that game. However, a disappointing final group stage game did lead to their exit from the tournament and the football ferns. Unfortunately, they were counting on a result from the Philippines in game two, and they ended up losing zero to one to the debutantes, which another historic event with Philippines yeah. winning. That was so proud of them. I just want to say like that, that's a story on itself. And when we talk about Netflix here in a minute, 
man, they should do a show on them. I think it would be really cool to see, you know, their come up and some that. But unfortunately, uh, a draw in that game would have been enough, but did not happen. And they were just unable to get the results they needed to advance. So Allie will not be continuing she will not be getting a rose. <laughs> I know. So sad. So sad. And you know what sucks is if you guys all saw the uh, offside call from New Zealand Ooh. in that where um, what happened, yeah, yeah. if that would not have been called offside, then uh, that would have tied it and this could have changed um, how that would have happened. So hold on. My husband's crawling in here with it. You could just hand me the charger. Thank you. <laughs> is he like army crawling in behind the scenes? I, I need my laptop one. The other one. Anyways, he tried to be suave about that. But anyways, let's go on. Um, that offside call ruined it. A tie would have been great. Um, if you saw it, it was she was literally off by an earlobe, I believe, and like part of her shoulder. And it's just, I have so many thoughts about that. But that's not what we're gonna get into today. Um, all right. Yeah. You have anything else you want to say about Allie Riley? Come home. Come home. come home, Allie. Come home. <laughs> we do yeah. miss her. I miss that smile. She has quite an infectious smile and her emotion. You never are wondering what she's thinking. That is for sure. So unfortunately for her, it was still a historic, historic tournament for Allie. I mean, they've earned their first ever World Cup win, like we said, against Norway. And because they make tournaments a lot, it's hard to forget that they're a very small nation that uh, it's not their most popular sport. I mean, they play all kinds of other things, not soccer though. I mean, you ask anybody who was in New Zealand for this and uh, in the beginning, they were all kind of like, it wasn't first and foremost on their mind to put it on TV, but then towards, as it kept going, they, they would, you'd go into bars and it would be on. And, you know, so it, it definitely got a foothold on them. And I hope that, uh, this definitely um, is going to uh, propel the sport forward in that country. Absolutely. And you know what? Let's move on to catching up with June Endo, someone who we started this episode talking about. Japan actually was able to beat Spain for nothing. And they're having a perfect tournament so far in Group C, despite the fact that they had to play Spain. So <laughs> super excited to see them doing their thing. They have 11 goals scored and none conceded like freaking insane chaos i mean they are seriously just i mean they are a powerhouse right now in this tournament they are something that we need to keep a very close eye on and i mean hey june endo herself she assisted the opening goal in the 12th minute of this game against spain she had a gorgeous pass into the space by a uh, spanish right back ona batelli i'm, I'm going to say all these names wrong i'm so sorry uh, and Hinata, she would confidently hammer it past goalkeeper Misa Rodriguez, and that was how she got her uh, name into the scoring column with an assist. So, again, big shout out to June Endo doing things on the big stage. I love seeing our girls doing amazing things. So as far as though catching up with our girls, those are the ones that are obviously not part of the U S women's national team. And I think they all deserve to get a little bit of a highlight. Do you have anything you would like to say about any of them? Oh, this is loaded. <laughs> this is loaded. And you know, I, you know me, I'm usually the troublemaker. Um, yes. What are we doing? So, all right. So let's just get into this. Let's just, rip this. Let's, you see the shirt. It says unwell. This is how I felt. You see the, the face. Most, it is unwell. <laughs> through most of this game last night, you know, stayed up till, uh, till midnight. And uh, real excited to see this game, hoping that maybe after that tie against the Netherlands that this would spawn like a little, um, you know, motivation and inspiring some kind of playmaking that was going to happen. And I don't know. I think I remember after that game, you know, they were giving Vlatko a lot of crap for not using subs. And you thought, OK, well, maybe he's just going to like rotate him heavily in this next game and. Oh boy, man. I, I think, I think the conversations just got worse after this game. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time recapping this game because ooh, 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 ooh. I, I just, again, I called, <laughs> I would like to call this episode the good, the bad and the ugly, because we have so much of all of it in this and we'll get to the good in a minute, but uh, this one was definitely ugly. I will say that. So let me just real quick, let you guys know just about this game. And then We'll go into like where we're at, why we're there, how, where we're going from here and everything as far as the World Cup tournament. But 
We had a very uninspiring draw last night, um, and we barely squeaked out in second place uh, out of Group E, while the Netherlands just decided to put up seven goals on uh, Vietnam. So there was that. So I think very early on in this game, we knew that it was probably very unlikely that we were going to get that top spot because we were going to have to win the game and we were going to have to score a lot of goals because they, uh, we, I think we had like two up on them on goal diff and they very quickly out the gate matched that. So unfortunately we were going to score any goals and there's really not a whole lot to say about this game. So <sighs> Blackco did make some changes to this starting lineup. He did bring in Lynn Williams, and that was something that a lot of people had criticized in the Netherlands game about her not making it. I've got so many thoughts about all this and in just a minute. Let's but let me the fact that the Netherlands and Portugal are two different teams with two different playing styles. So bringing her in now isn't like a, oh, my bad, here she is. Like, no. Like you would think that a coach would analyze how a team plays and use their players according to that, that playing style. However, as this game went on and has it's concluded, I'm very, very curious on if he has any idea what he's doing, to be honest, but let me, we'll just say this, this team got very, very lucky in the dying minutes. There was a chance by Portugal where it hit the post, the man of the match, woman of the match, the thing of the match was the goalpost. I don't know about you. I watched this real time, and I mean, it was in slow motion. I almost lost my mind. I thought, oh, oh my God. Like, I literally saw U.S.'s chances just, poof, just disintegrating into the air as this ball made its way. I mean, it, it was a run that should never have happened. It was, you know, all off turnovers and just sloppy passing. And thank the Lord it did not go in. And, uh, you know, we got, like I said, we got very lucky. Um, we had 16 shots that amounted to a whole lot of nothing. Um, there are multiple moments in this game that could sum it up, but there was a play by Alex Morgan in the 74th minute that probably does it best. She tracked down, intercepted a pass by Diana Gomez, turned towards goal, saw an open Megan Rapino to her left, and instead chose to hoof the ball over the Portuguese defense to absolutely freaking no one. Now, yeah. not, laying, not laying blame on Morgan because the whole team right now looks sloppy, aside from maybe Germa. And Ertz, just playing out of position, is still, I think, doing a really good job. But just... No, we're just know. not connecting. And, you know, there's a lot of drama about this team happening with people, you know, criticizing and then people being mad that people are criticizing and, you know, me and love me some controversy. Um, I do think that there are some issues that we need to address. I do think that, sorry, there's a time and a place for dancing and celebrating. And yeah, <laughs> you want to get pumped up and you want to be ready to go into the game, but there's a difference between arrogance and cockiness. And I, I, we just lost somebody watching. Somebody got real pissed at that one. Yeah, but nope. Turn that off. <laughs> totally get that concept. But at the same time, I do think you have to be in your own right headspace. And if what gets you pumped is putting on your song, sorry, before every Angel City game, you know, I'm in my car blasting the here comes the queen before every big meeting at work. You know, I'm Superman posing in the bathroom. I'm doing all the things I need to do to create that good mental headspace for myself. But at some point, that's not enough. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure everybody has seen the comments out there. <laughs> um, I know there's a lot of controversy right now around what Carly Lloyd had to say about this. And I mean, I'll be honest and I'll say, I'll say it. There were a lot of truths to what she said, you know, when she said, you know, that they were not good enough. Um, or like you said, that there's a difference between confidence and, and cockiness. And, you know, part of me just wonders, you know, did this team come in too cocky, um, too arrogant in a sense that they thought they're going to do what they always do, which is come into the group stage, you know, kind of steamroll over the competition and then make their way into the group and then, then decide to maybe like pull themselves together and play because it's always been fairly, fairly easy for them to do that. Yeah. So I guess, I guess my question yeah. is, ugh, I don't know what my question is. All I know is, uh, I'll, I'll say they, the game's changing. Other well, countries are getting better. It's not enough for us to just be us. 
And you and I were talking about this a little before we started, that there's also seems to be a not generational gap, because it's not that big of a gap, but a gap. I mean, I think somewhat. I mean, you've got very young girls, you know, literally like 18, 19, 20 years old. And then you've also got veterans that are definitely in their 30s. There's a middle generation of, of women there that I feel like we're missing where you have the youth and the maturity at the same time. And I don't know. I don't know if that's affecting their ability to play together as a team or a, an, a, you know, an inability to connect on a certain level. I, I don't know. Um, I, it's interesting. You know, you see a lot of criticism out there and on uh, like Trinity Rodman. She loves TikTok. She loves to go out and do TikToks and put them out there. That's that's just what she's done. That is no different than what maybe someone did 20 years ago before a game, but we just couldn't see it. Okay. Like there's plenty of things that people did to hype themselves up. Like you said, for games, we just see it. And it gives this illusion to people who don't understand that they're not taking this seriously or, you know, this really doesn't, this doesn't mean anything to them. Um, there, I don't think that's what it is at all. Like I think dancing definitely puts you in the right frame of mind going into a match you know we see swimmers and they've got their music in this is just what people do to get ready yeah now I I get it I get it and uh, you know I I don't I don't think that has anything whatsoever to do with the way that they're playing I think it's a bigger issue I think it's a system issue I think it's a leadership issue I think it's an inability to really adapt to situations I mean we we I mean, how many comments have I seen out there of people comparing Vlatko and I dare I say it, Freya, to one another because <laughs> you know they 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 put people in different positions. They don't sub in you know when we really feel like they need to. They really haven't changed up things you know to to really showcase mm-hmm. you know uh, different playing styles and everything. So I think a lot of the blame should go on on the head coach. This group of girls is way yeah. too talented to be going through this because we've seen these girls play and they play fantastically. And I've seen girls, you know, Sophia Smith, she did not have a great game last night. She, you know, it was, it was not her best game. Um, I mean, Alex Morgan, I mean, I don't want to start on Rapino. Um, she did not have a good game. I also don't think she was the right sub for the job at the time, though, either. I think we had so many fresh legs, so many young girls that really so were in that there. A problem? The <sighs> fact that we're trying to still give these vets minutes on the pitch when there's somebody better for it. Are we trying to plug rookies into a system that they're sorry? We look at how soccer has developed and changed. It's not the same game anymore. <laughs> It's and not. we need a coach that can see the talent of these young rookies who have kind of this like unbridled energy and figure out how to harness that instead of continuing to plug them into a system that just isn't right for them I mean, in order to, to wonder minutes when she's about to quit. Well, and you, yeah, you have to wonder when you have all these older girls in here, is that in some way a little bit intimidating to these young girls like do they challenge anything or do they just go and do what they're told whereas if this team was younger in general with maybe a few veterans that they might feel like they had a little more freedom to like be and do who they are I I don't know I'm sure like we said we don't have any of these answers I'm literally just devil's advocate up here just trying to point out things I've seen things I saw things that I've read things that have been said and just trying to figure out like what do we do going forward? Because let me tell you, we should not have advanced last night based on how we played. Saying it right here, Portugal did everything in their power to win that game. And we did almost everything we could to lose it. And it was just frustrating. I've never seen them look so disjointed, so out of sync, so just... It felt like a, like 11 players playing a game individually on the pitch. Like it just didn't yeah. feel cohesive, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's, it has to happen. If it doesn't happen in the next game, then this is where it ends. It's over. Yeah. So. But do you want to talk about your conspiracy theory? 
Okay, so here's my conspiracy theory, to be honest, and this is what's making me feel better in life, is we talked about the fact that we all know and the world all knows that there is a Netflix documentary that is being filmed about the women's World Cup team currently. All right. So not only does it add a lot of pressure and stuff to them, first and foremost, there's a lot happening with that. But listen, who doesn't like drama? Who doesn't like a good like fall from underdog rise from the ashes type of story. What if just hear me out here. All right. Hear me out. Don't turn off. What if Netflix was like, Hey, um, so this is what we think. We know you guys can pull this off. All right. But we need you guys to make it look really difficult. We need you guys to make it look like maybe this isn't going to happen. Let's make this look yeah. like, you barely make it out of here and there are problems. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we get this turnaround. We get, you can hear the music in the background of the documentary of them like training for the world cup, like a knockout stage. And you can see them. Like I can just see the montage happening where they climb up and then they beat Sweden or whoever they have. And then they're like, Oh my gosh, we like, come on, tell me that's not a story you want to see as opposed to, hey, the U.S. is number one. They steamrolled these three. They beat everyone on their way there. And, hey, they're still number one. Like, I don't know. And they make really cute TikToks. <laughs> they do make cute TikToks. But I don't know. I just, I don't know. Right now, Netflix is probably thinking, ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, <laughs> goalpost. Yes, I think the goalpost is a paid actor in this. I think I think it was actually a person and it was like, oh, crap, this is too close. Mm, let me move over. Let me block that shot because they have to advance. That's part of the story, but they can't do it easily because, well, that nobody wants to see that. So listen, just wait, just wait. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's making me feel better about the way they're playing. If that's oh, the yeah. case. Um, but, you know, we've also seen lots of people commenting in our chat right now about, and as we mentioned, the similarities to Angel City pre-tweed. So one of those things really shows up for us with Ertz, with an Angel City player. Well, so, and, and I mean, yeah, and, and Ertz, I mean, she's been great. She's just playing out of position. She's like, in a, she's a center back. Look at what our midfield looks like. Um, we, we put the, the past networks for Portugal and USA up on a slide on YouTube, and there is nothing happening in the midfield. And I think a huge testament to somebody like having someone like Ertz in the midfield. Now, granted, if she wasn't in the back, who knows? Maybe we'd be scored on, but with her not in the middle, we're definitely not scoring four. Yeah. I don't know. What are your thoughts on when you look at that, Nina, what do you, what, what do you see? What do you say? What do you think? I see anger first of all, because like coaches need to be looking at this and I've said it from the beginning. You don't just pull a player into a different location just to, you know, make a fill in for a void that you perceive is there. And in this situation, Honestly, we are missing that true center holding midfielder. And maybe this is our tactic to just go wide, go wide, go wide, <laughs> and to give up the middle of the pitch. But then I need to see some stuff further down. So, <laughs> Biggie Stardust says, please take that map down. It hurts my eyes. It hurts my eyes too, believe me. I saw this and I was like, that is. That is just disgusting. Like that is just, that is just not us. But whatever <laughs> that is, that is not us. And I hope that we left that in yeah. the group stages, whatever that is. Um, real quick before we move on to the next game, because I don't want to spend much time on this because it angers me and what we, we need to be a goldfish. We need to forget and move on. But I did see a lot of stuff out there that uh, very interesting. A lot of firsts for the U.S. Women's National Team and not not on the good end of things, unfortunately. Um, and let me see. Do you have the, uh, can you advance my slide, please? Yeah, but it, first we have oh. this one. Oh, oh, what's the next one? And this one. Yeah. No, oh, well. See, I read the slides. I looked at stuff. <laughs> I'm looking at the notes. Here we are. So real quick, just a couple of tweets that are interesting. So history at the Women's World Cup this weekend. First Olympic champ out in the group stage, which was Canada. First host yeah. out in a group Important stage, New Zealand. One. And this Columbia is the tweet that I read while I was still waking up and hadn't had all of my medications yet. 
Oh, geez. And then Colombia hands Germany their first group stage loss since 1995. It's a new era. And then also, uh, we did advance, yes. But however, this is the second time that U.S. has finished group runner-up. That was 2011. And then five points are the fewest ever in a World Cup group stage for the U.S. And four goals match the fewest for the U.S. in a group stage since 2015. Well, 2015 was the was low as well. So a lot of things happening that are not positive, but a lot of things that we can build on and hopefully figure out and do better. Now, sorry, go back to the slides that I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so going back to what we were looking at. So we do know that the U.S. women's national team has advanced. We came in second in our group. Thankfully, not by much. Squeaked by, didn't we? I mean, that goal going, if that post hadn't saved that, then that's all she wrote. So goodbye. <laughs> but yeah, this is what it looks like. Netherlands ended up with an eight goal differential. Man, that game really propelled them along in that. We were not going to catch them at all by the way we were playing. And then, of course, we have five points. So Portugal, though, and Vietnam, you know, kudos to showing up. First, you know, debutantes, as they like to call them, first World Cup. And Portugal definitely made a name for themselves in this. So congrats to them, to be honest. I, I, they, they deserved, if they would have advanced, they deserved every single bit of it. So that's yeah. my thought. So looking at what's coming up for the U.S. women's national team, thankfully we are not out. We have more soccer to go. And talking <laughs> about hurts my eyes, you know I'm blind. Oh my gosh, here. So what I'll do is I'll go over this real quick because I know it's hard to read, but what this basically says is um, who's going to be playing who. Now, these games aren't done, and I'll go over what games are still left to play. It's the ones in black on this screen. That is Group F and H are still left to play, and G as well. So Switzerland and Spain are set to kick off Friday at 10 Pacific. And then on Saturday, Netherlands will play the second place in Group G, which will most likely be Italy, I believe. And then on Saturday at 1 a.m., all these are in Pacific time, Japan and Norway will kick off. Then on Sunday at a lovely, lovely 2 a.m., I don't even want to talk about this yet, but at 2 a.m., we are going to be playing the first place in Group G, which will most likely be Sweden. Now, again, I'm going to tell you when you can watch all these games so we can see exactly how that plays out. But Australia, Denmark will be on Monday at 3 30. Um, and then Monday at 12 30, which will be, yeah, Monday at 12 30. Again, these times are all weird. England and Nigeria will be playing. And then the two games that are still undetermined are on August 8th at 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. That's going to be group F and H. So, real quick, if you're looking at this screen, and I'll say it for everybody who is listening. Argentina and Sweden play at midnight tonight. South Africa and Italy play at midnight tonight. That will really determine who ends up in first and second. So if you feel like staying up and watching, and uh, if you have a team that you want us to play and you want to cheer them on to be that team, then this is when you would do it. Um, now we've got the other two groups, F and H, coming up. These are going to be um tomorrow wait that's gonna be tonight okay it says tomorrow what it means is tonight at 3 a.m i'm gonna say tonight so that makes sense jamaica brazil panama france and then on thursday at 3 a.m you're gonna see morocco colombia germany south korea nina thoughts on any of those games is there anything you want to see i i, I wasn't even going to talk about the scenarios of who and what's and wins but yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is an Angel City podcast, and we've spent a lot of time not so far on Angel City, but that's because this is important, and we know that this is also what we want to hear. We've got a lot of players out there uh, representing for us. You know, my thoughts are, let's go. <laughs> you know, we love some good footy, and here it is, playing on the world stage and representing we're getting down to the wire and you're going to start to see teams either take off or collapse and, you know, uh, Panda, you told a good joke earlier. Do you want to tell your joke again? Oh, wait, it's been a really bad year for subs. Yeah. 
<laughs> submersibles and <laughs> soccer subs. <laughs> I pretty hard at that. <laughs> you made me in a cough on that one. So yeah, so I had to make sure I was ready for that, but I didn't, I did not prepare you for that. So. <laughs> lots and lots of good soccer happening. So make sure you tune in, find some watch parties. They are really fun right now. I'm sorry. Everybody has been amazing at all the watch parties we've been able to attend. And for every game, for every team, for every country that you could be interested in, there's a watch party for that. So hit us up if you don't know where to go or hit right. up your Angel City SG because they're really in the know on these things too. So, yeah, you know, just reach out and find the fun. Listen, 2 a.m. is only fun when it's around friends. 2 a.m. alone is just sad. So let's let's get together. Right. Like, hey, you know, maybe 2 a.m. for this next game. That This is exactly what they need for us to cheer them on. And, uh, you know, we'll figure out what we're actually doing for that. We don't know quite yet. But uh, we will let you know. But guess what? We said the good, the bad, the ugly. We've talked about the bad. We've talked about the ugly. Let's just end on a good note for once. And uh, Nina, it's now your time to talk. I know I've chatted a lot about the World Cup, but we kind of took um, different parts of this for ourselves. We thought it'd be easier if I focused on one thing and she focused on the other. And then uh, we could bring that to you in a little better form. So, But I did, I did watch this game. Um, but I do want you to talk about it and, and how what your thoughts were on it as well. So yeah, happier I mean, news, of course, is the Fugazi Cup. Let's go. I mean, <laughs> uh, we've talked so much smack about this, and we are currently now sitting in second place in our group with seven points, which means we are actually tied with Gotham, but they have an extra game right now, it looks like. Uh, for the number of points. And we're right behind Casey Current, who has 10 points. So we're not out of it. Like, we're not out of this Challenge Cup. And I'm kind of excited because, you know who's at the bottom of our group? I'll show the slide. Oh, I, <laughs> I have it up. Excited. I have it up. I have it up for you. too excited here. I, San Diego I mean, Wave. Look at that. They've got four. At the bottom there. They have four reds in a row. Four losses. And look at Let's us. Let's make it five. Let's make it five. Go God, for I five. love playing spoiler. I love controversy. I love all these things, especially when it doesn't involve me personally. Yeah. So well, we'll get let, uh, let's get it. We'll get into the stats and stuff here and what that all means. But let's talk about this amazing game because again, we need something positive to talk about. And boy, was this. Oh I mean, my goodness. Yes. We took on and beat the Portland Thorns at home in the challenge cup with a brace by the newly engaged birthday girl, Savannah McCaskill and a goal. From the yes. There we go. I had to use it once on this pod. I didn't want to use any booze or something. <laughs> womp womps would have been, I my know. button would have been worn out. <laughs> and a goal for the Thorns came from Morgan Weaver, but you know, who stood out to me was our player of the match, Angelina Anderson coming in for her first professional appearance and first start freaking amazing match like and yes joe i totally agree with what joe is saying right here sarah gordon for president sarah kicked major butt in this game she looked incredible and the combination between her and angelina anderson who i don't want to say more controversial things but uh, and if uh and if anybody remembers when we drafted Alyssa thompson Back there, you know, several months ago, our number one draft pick, our second draft pick was Angelina Anderson. And oh. a lot of people, I think, were just like, why do we need another goalkeeper? Like, I feel like that has been something that we we never really talk about needing. And, wow, she was the girl we didn't know we needed until we needed her, huh? Oh, yeah. She, <laughs> her dynamics on the pitch, she looked incredible. I would not mind seeing her start 17,000 other times. And, you know, she actually says that usually they get the notice of who's going to start the day before, but she got two days notice that she was going to be the starter. So good on that. <laughs> it had been Brittany Eisenhower, correct? Yes. Was she, was she backup keeper for this game? She was indeed. I wonder if they were just like, you know, well, have we played a challenge cup? We've, we've played a challenge cup game under Becky, right? We have. Yes. We yeah. Have. Okay. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's, it's exciting. I, I like having competition for spots and I did like seeing her, uh, Anderson's 
chemistry with the back line. But let's get into this game. It started in the ninth minute. Well, it started in the first minute, but the scoring started <laughs> in the ninth minute when Sarah Gordon, our girl on that back line, actually finds Jasmine Spencer with a long diagonal pass to the right wing. Spencer is able to take a few touches and she's able to wait for the runners to arrive and then gets this beautiful cross into the six yard box. And this is something we know Jasmine is known for. She has I feel like our best running crosses on the team. And McCaskill is sitting there ready. She crashes the net, heads that ball decisively past the Thorns keeper, Bella Bixby, for the first goal of the match. And it it knocked out her bun a little bit, so she had to redo her hair. But I know. I saw that. I was like, she's got a lot of hair. <laughs> she knocked her bun right off the top of her head, which, hey, how I will, for a goal, absolutely well-deserved. Redo my hair for a goal. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, Gordon again coming in clutch in the 22nd minute when midfielder Reina Reyes actually runs on a, to a through pass in a transitional play. And she was going on goal and forward Hannah Bedford also making a run. But Gordon's able to sprint back and actually overtook Reyes. And this girl, Sarah, she's got her legs back. She's got her legs back. She is I so fast her. and so fun to watch and very oh dangerous God. for anyone that has a ball at their feet, for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, Thorns did get an equalizer in the 44th minute when Betfort was able to dribble up the center of the field and she finds defender Quika on the right. Quika is able to run forward into the box and there's a lateral pass to Morgan Weaver who takes that one touch to control the ball and then is able to just slide it out of reach for him, Angelina Anderson as she dove full extension. So that tells you something. You know, mm. she's full extension there. That was a great ball. That was a great pass. You know, right. you got to give it to them for scoring that one. Yeah. I mean, that's what they were saying, you know, on the, on the, I mean, there's nothing she could do in that position. I mean, you just, you just can't allow those kinds of shots to happen, unfortunately. And it was a great shot, but like you said, we got a tie ball game. Yep. Fortunately, we start out the second half very strong. And in the 47th minute, McCaskill actually curls this beautiful free kick over the thorns wall, past a diving Bixby and just inside the far post, we have our go-ahead goal. That was amazing. I mean, I love a good free kick goal. I mean, you touch no one straight in. Ah, oh, beautiful. And I love seeing McCaskill just kind of like getting in that groove, like doing the things that we know she can do, but just felt a little disjointed earlier on in the season, just not being able to make those kinds of things happen. So, man, who had a better weekend than McCaskill? <laughs> no one. Literally, she had my dream weekend. Although we were going to be holding our breath for a moment in this game. It is true. And, you know, those last 10 minutes, we were seeing the Thorns throw all their players forward, trying to find that equalizer. In the 83rd minute, Nielsen actually commits a foul in the box against Olivia Moultrie, conceding a penalty. And Moultrie steps up to take the kick. And Anderson read this from the jump and she set she dives to ground makes the save and holy cow less than a minute later she's making another save going and grabbing the ball from a close range attempt by Moultrie this is why she's player of the match and and Moultrie is like what 15 <laughs> something like that she's like oh, a kid I mean yeah. let's be honest it wasn't a great PK um yeah. but you could certainly guess wrong and that goes in. So, you know, guessing right. I mean, how much of being a goalkeeper for PKs is just guesswork and luck? I'd say 50-50. I mean, you know, there's a lot of that in there. So she guessed right and she controlled it and she didn't allow that ball to, uh, to be rebounded in any way to come back. So she did everything she was supposed to do in that moment. She stepped up to the plate and I know Paige Nielsen is buying her a bottle of wine, I'm sure at some point. <laughs> Oh, yeah. She owes her big time. And, yes. you know, Portland didn't stop pushing up. They had 10 minutes of added time, but we were able to keep them off the board. Thank the Lord. What a win. Always good to beat Portland. Now, I know they were without some of their big players, but so were we. So I feel like that just evens the score at the end of the day. You know, take one Sophia Smith for one Alyssa Thompson, you know, so we're good. 
But either way, yeah. here are the um, actual stats. So yeah, the stats actually look pretty even. We had 14 shots with five on target. So there's 17 with eight on target. We had slightly more possession and slightly more passes with slightly better pass accuracy, but nothing too crazy. But 16 fouls had called against us to their nine, which is insane to me. Wow. 16 to nine. Definitely were, a competitive match. It didn't were feel. <laughs> we were, we were, we were getting in there. <laughs> for we, sure. We we're playing physical. And I mean, I like it though. Sorry. Yeah. I sorry. Like sorry. We look good. Not sorry. So no, not at all. All right. Well, let's move on to uh, this slide. We're going to talk a little bit. Like we said, this is what it looks like. And now we've talked about this before with challenge cup. They take the top team in each group. Correct. Correct. And then they take one more. Yes. Whoever the top second place team is across the board. Correct. And that's going to be a hard thing for us to lock down. Right. But right, how many more, how many matches do we have left? Do we know? have one against San Diego wave. So we really need this win and we need to get our goal differential up there. So we need to beat wave like for nothing. Okay. Who would be, who's coming? Is it Gotham? You said that was. Uh, Casey current is the one that we really need to look at, but also uh, Gotham. So right now, Casey current have um, 10 points because they have three wins. Okay, so, so they could lose and we could win, but then goal diff is... It will be the they? next tiebreaker because there's no head-to-head. -head. Right. So okay. it probably actually yeah. goes goals four first, but yeah, they I have 11 goals four and we only have six. So five goals will beat them and they need to lose. So you're telling me there's a chance. I'm telling you there's a chance. If it's a million dollars on the line, let's go. All right. Hey, for a million dollars, yes. Casey Absolutely. Kearns is going to be playing Racing Louisville this Saturday at 5 p.m. So we will know before our game ends if we have a chance. Okay. Well, everybody I tune in to that for sure. And that then makes me so nervous. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's that. why, we, it's why we love this game, right? It, it gets you oh. in all the feels. It makes you sad. It makes you happy. It makes you angry. It makes you nervous. It, it gives you all the feels. We know this. We've yeah. been through all of them. Louisville have a good chance to to win it because they are first in their group. So they're going to want to keep that position. So yeah. it's not like it's a throwaway game there either. So right. No. We'll yeah, exactly. It's not like in our group or in like group B or that's us in group B or group A where they could lose and they will still be the top of that bracket. Like Louisville needs, needs to tie or, or win. So, I mean, that's good, but if Casey current does tie, then it, we don't have a chance. So, yeah, we need them to lose. But either way, it doesn't matter about the cup. It matters that we beat San Diego because no matter what it means for us, that's what we need. And that is what is going to be happening on Saturday, August 5th at 430 down in Snapdragon. We are going to be playing them and we have been on fire when it comes to playing San Diego recently. So why not make it a hat trick when it comes to wins against them in a row, right? Yeah, I mean, you know me, I love to win. So <laughs> let's do it again. Let's go down there. It's going to be hot. It's going to be so hot. But it you is going to be hot. But we'll get a water break. It'll be okay. But you know what? You, what if you can't make it, Nina? If you can't make it, you're not alone and there is stuff to do. Whoop, whoop. All right. Who does earlier. not want to go down to Sunburn Stadium? Uh, we can go to this watch party that is going to be in either downtown L.A. or Common Space in Hawthorne. Either way, it's going to be a fun day because not only one, but there will be two games. So there will be Angel City versus San Diego and then they are going to do the uh, World Cup kicks off at seven uh, that evening. So, hey, I think uh, I think that sounds much better than going to Sunburn Stadium, right? Well, I have to work, unfortunately. So I will be at work until five o'clock, but then I'll head on over to wherever I can get to. Which one's closest to you? Uh, common space. Is that very close? Yeah. 
Okay. Well, maybe we can go there. We'll meet you after work and hang out. And then we will watch at on Saturday what you're going to see. And the game that they're talking about is Netherlands will be playing that second place team that uh, is going to be either Italy or Sweden. So that'll be a fun one to watch. Yes. So anyways, that is, gosh, is that it? That is it. You know how we like to sign off? We have a quote for you today. If I can remember buttons. <laughs> so the quote <laughs> is from, of course, the engaged birthday girl herself, the brace winner, Savannah McCaskill. And she says, the relationships, especially in our offense, are starting to get better. That's where scoring our goals is coming from. We just have to continue to put in the work every single day. The confidence will continue to grow and the results will come. I think our U.S. Women's National Team needs to work on their relationships as well. So Ooh, I think that's... Well, no, I do. I think I think there's that we're lacking some chemistry, and I think we're finally seeing that with Angel City, and that's why we're scoring goals, and that's why we're winning games. So, either way, this has been a fun podcast. I know there's a lot of information to digest, but thank you for hanging out with us. Let us know your thoughts and everything. This is why we do this. We don't do this to tell you how to think. We do this to start the conversations. We do this to to just, I don't know. It's kind of like therapy for all this. Like, I just want to talk about it. I mean, I went on to Twitter and the funny thing about it is, I've said this before, is one person can say such and such player had the worst game I've ever seen them play in their life. And then the next tweet could be like, the only person on the pitch that deserves to be playing is that exact same person. So yeah. let me just tell you. All right. Everyone- thinking different things. Everyone sees this game differently. Everyone has a different, I mean, that there's not, it's not one plus one is two in this game, unfortunately. And I don't know the answers to it. I'm not even going to pretend I know the answers to it. I just want us to win. I just want them to get it together and figure it out and to know that we are 100% behind them, rooting them the whole way. And yes, I can't wait to see what happens on Sunday at the God awful time of the night. and with that i'm gonna go drink some more juice and curl up in bed it's been swell (laughs) has it i didn't die bye (laughs) no fluff oh my gosh nina there's there's our fluff fluff. all right sorry nina's sick today guys she doesn't want to be you don't want to be fluffed so (laughs) i just sounded wrong this is why we can't fluff because Nina will cough the whole Ugh. time because yeah. I make her laugh. And I've tried very hard to not like make her like cough laugh the whole I time. I think I've but... only had to mute like four times. Yes. So anyways, again, thank That's you to everybody. So, when we didn't do a YouTube show, we could like, I could blow my nose. No one would know. Like all these things. And now I'm like, shoot. Like, Listen, <sighs> 10 minutes before I started this live, I looked like a bridge troll. That's the difference between podcast and YouTube. I had to pull myself together and like at least make it look like I had a nose and a face and I didn't like live under somebody's like overpass and I'm was like peddling yeah. people for, for drugs or something. So <laughs> and I'm not so, wearing pants. <laughs> top, Nina. <laughs> There's oh. a lot of work to even get to this point. <laughs> oh, poor Nina, poor Nina. All right. Anyways, if you're still hanging on with us, thank you again. Hit us up. Let us know your thoughts. If you're going to be at a watch party, by all means, let us know. Hit us up. Come talk to us. We love to like talk to everybody and uh, and just meet all the new fans and old fans uh, of this game because you guys are all amazing. We love you all. And well, I only have one no. thing I have left to say. You know what that is, Nina? Boy, no, bam, bam. Nina, you forgot to put up the um, uh, the quote. You're supposed to leave a quote at the end. I just want you, you to know. No, this this the thing went away. You closed the laptop, or your laptop died. All right, you you have those slides. Anyways, <gasps> bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.